Good morning, everyone. This is Tractor Man 44. You know, you might have noticed in the background uh, on different things I've been doing in the shed, these uh, blue square posts and stuff behind me. Never really talked about them or anything that much before. I uh, done a little side, side job doing some sheet metal work and uh, traded traded for this uh, this set of 10,000 pound two post rotary uh, lifts. So uh, it was brand new, had never been used, and it had been installed, but the company never opened. And a buddy of mine bought the building, and then we kind of done a little deal, and I ended up with this particular one here. But uh, it's time to go ahead and install them. So that's what I'm in the process of doing is opening up the area where they're going to go. But there is a, a little bit of a hitch. Whenever I poured this slab for the future, I put 1,200 feet of 1,200 linear feet of um, PEX tubing in the concrete decking. Well, I laid it out on graph paper and also left me about 30 inch, uh, uh, 30, roughly 32 inch octagons where the posts are actually going to go. And I dug two piers 30 inches deep and laced them all with, uh, with reinforcing rod in anticipation of installing this lift. So I know exactly where they are. I've got them laid out on the floor. So we're going to uh, go about the business of, of getting that thing installed here very As a mic, I could not come up with the appropriate concrete anchors for this. So I had to go to a company on the internet uh, called Confast. That means concrete fasteners. Uh, and I had to get me some uh, three quarter inch diameter by six and a quarter inch threaded length of um, wedge anchorings, uh, wedge anchors. Uh, it's gonna take a three quarter inch masonry drill uh, in order to drill those anchors, or drill those holes for the anchor. According to what I found, uh, on the internet about this particular machine, it requires on that huge flange that's underneath it, it, it requires a minimum of three, four and a quarter inches embedment down into uh, a minimum of 3,000 psi uh, rated concrete. So, uh, in order to get that, I had to go this particular length right here because I may have to shim maybe as much as a quarter of an inch somewhere around the, the 16 inch uh, dimension of the plate in order to get everything perfectly level. And I have to have the room for the shims, plus the uh, thickness of the plate, plus a washer, plus the full depth of the nut. And so I had to go with this particular length anchor. Oh, and at the same time, about the shims, I went ahead and bought a set of uh, these shims right here. Four different colors is four different thicknesses. So it's 1 32nd, 1 8, 3 16 and a quarter. So uh, my concrete's fairly level uh, whenever we, we finish that off back there. Uh, but there is probably a little bit of a dip here or there. So what I did, I did two things to locate or keep track of where those piers are, are put in there. I measured from the foundation out two different directions and wrote on the foundation exactly uh, how far out and what the alignment was so that I could actually lay those out from the marks I put on the, uh, on the foundation walls before you put the support the slab. And then secondly, on my graph paper, I laid it all out to scale every one of the uh, the uh, four circuits of the PEX tubing is six inches apart, uh, laced all around covering virtually the entire square footage of the, uh, the entire slab, with the exception of where those two piers are, and I laced around those piers, and I have that cleared, mark, marked clearly on that graph paper. So I've got a, a double check there to make sure that whenever I drill these anchors, I don't drill through one of the PEX In tubing. preparation, whenever I built this building, I knew I was gonna put wood hydronic in floor heating in it uh, with a, a wood fired boiler. I uh, hadn't really acquired the boiler yet, uh, but I was going to build one or whatever. But it doesn't matter. Uh, that worked into another deal. But at any rate, if you take a look, see what you're looking at is my concrete floor. The yellow perimeter being the outline of my foundation. And this is to scale. This is definitely to scale. And you can see green, you can see red, you can see green, you can see red. Those are equally length, 300 foot linear feet of half inch ID 5 8 OD PEX tubing that I've actually got poured into my concrete slab. As you can see, here's your four supplies right here and four returns right here, or first visa, it doesn't really matter. But you can just follow around, you can see how the how I've got the circuits routed. I had to lay this out on graph paper, you know what, until I got everything to where I wanted it and got the links to work out within 15 feet of the exact length. Two of them are exactly uh, 300 feet, and I think. Uh, a couple of them are, are like 15 feet, 12 foot, and then 15 foot less than 300. So they're actually fairly equal distance. So uh, it's not going to be too much of a problem balancing the water flow. And in a great big area like this, shouldn't have much of an issue anyway. But in preparation for doing this, whenever I wanted to, knew I was going to put a two post lift in, this being a garage door, this being a garage door, this being a sliding door on this end, 
I opted for to come in 16 foot and then roughly uh, well in line with the doorways essentially and then 16 foot in from the end and install that lip. So before I poured the concrete I dug 30 inch deep piers right here and then I built hexagon or I'm sorry uh, octagon shaped form 30 inch by 30 inch across the octagon and then reinforced with rebar and then poured 30 inch piers at the same time that we poured the entire monolithic slab. Uh, now this is a a three foot knee wall all the way around the perimeter and then a two foot foundation wall uh, 12 inches wide three foot deep uh, all the way around the perimeter of that so this right here is where I'm going to uh, install the two posts of the two post lip that should be good and uh, very secure very secure uh, way of mounting that simply because you know well, we've got the ballast there with the, all that concrete but these are actually uh, an electric motor that operates a hydraulic pump the hydraulic pump then is going to uh, move the cylinders the cylinders then are going to pull on the cable and the cable is going to go up and over the top and down the other side through a series of pulleys that's going to uh, raise the opposite the opposing side of the of the lift so uh, I got to figure all that out I got to figure out the installation and all that stuff you know but uh, it shouldn't be too awful much trouble To make sure that I know exactly where center of that concrete pier is, is I've located by measuring off of the foundation walls in two places to get a square mark, uh, dead center of that 30 inch uh, diameter pier. And then what I did, I marked that with a square and then went ahead and measured one inch increments all the way out on the four corners. And I'm going to do that on both sides. That way whenever I set the, the uh, plate of the, the, the two post lift right here, I can determine with these markings where the dead center of that lift is located and I want that dead center to be hopefully pretty close to that. Now that I've got my grid set down and marked on the floor nice and squarely just use this laser level that goes five different directions uh, goes left right up down and out the out the uh, front and you shoot across I've got it in line with my cross hatch here shoot it right across here and pick up half the half of it on the uh, edge of my square, of my little tri-square. You can see the other half of it bypassing, going over to the wood. Transfer over here. Set the square on the floor over here. On my mark, and you can see we've got on my mark, and I've got half the uh, laser beam here, and you can see the other half the beam up there on the 4x4. Four four. I finally got them in the basic positions, almost exactly where they need to go. They're within probably an inch or inch and a quarter all the way around of where they need to go. I'm trying to center them up perfectly on those uh, on those uh, pads, simply because I don't want to take a chance of hitting one of my pegs. But uh, now it's time for me to get the specific dimension between the two pedestal bases. What I'm going to do on this is I'm going to install that crossbar up on top because if that crossbar is installed loosely, then I'll be able to shim this way or that with some little U-shaped shims in order to get it uh, reasonably plumb. And, and remember PLS, plumb level and square? I will uh, be able to get it plumb level square uh, before I attach anything permanently because I don't want to attach these down to the ground, waste my anchors, find out that I've got one of them just out of filter wear. And of course, I've got my shop dog, Layla. She keeps bumping my laser. If you notice, I had several marks on the floor over here by the left pedestal. Uh, she loves the little red dot, and I'd be over there getting ready to make a mark, and the dot would move, and she'd be over there trying to chase the dot. Well, we got her up there, so now I got to get the appropriate bolt and uh, just get those finger tightened in there loosely. Uh, that way I can go about the business of squaring and leveling the, the legs. We'll blow all of that out of there uh, real quick with the air compressor. Double check the depth of the hole. 
And we're gonna repeat that uh, nine more times. What we're using is three quarter inch bolts that are six and three quarter inch long with the minimum requirement to, uh, to, uh, for this thing here. It's a minimum requirement of four and a half inches embedment into the, uh, into the concrete. And I'm ending up with just about five and a quarter inches by the time I'll get those tightened down. And what I'm doing is I'm using an epoxy, uh, I'm cleaning those holes very, very well, very well, and I'm using an epoxy sealant down inside the holes along with these guys right here to uh, hold everything secure. One of my recent videos, I completed this old uh, destroyed or, or damaged wood furnace that had been through a fire and uh, kind of remade it to where I could uh, get temporary heat in my shed until I get my boiler done. But uh, as you can tell, I've been working in my two t-shirts all day, a long sleeve and a short sleeve t-shirt. And uh, it's quite comfortable in here and still got a pretty good bed of coals and it's just about time to close up shop for the day. Well, I stepped outside. I had too much concrete dust floating around in the air and there. It's getting in my teeth. You know, it's kind of making everything feel gritty you know but um i think we've gone far enough for uh, for the day kind of itching to get this done so we're going to be following right up with part two and uh get this thing completed i'm kind of kind of needing to raise my old truck up i got some exhaust issues won't pass inspection so that's going to be the first victim on that lift uh, that'd be a good test too see if that ten thousand pound lift will really lift ten thousand pounds or not but anyway, any rate you know what uh this has been a fun project so far hope y'all ain't bored too much i can hear layla's giving me hell already um, <laughs> I have got her in the outdoor kennel right now, but, uh, at any rate, this is good enough for today. This is Tractor Man 44 and I am out of here.